Good evening and welcome to Mystic Matters, the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce television show. We're so pleased to be back this week and uh, I'll just tell you some of the events that are happening. I'm Kristen Hartnett, Manager of Membership and Sales at the Mystic Chamber. Suzette is traveling all around the world. She's not Santa Claus. We'll put that rumor to rest right away. Um, and then Trisha is attending a conference. So those busy girls have left me in charge and uh, we'll try not to have pandemonium ensue. Coming up, we have a few events for the Mystic Chamber. Our December 3rd annual dinner. Uh, you can make reservations for that at the uh, Mystic Marriott. We're very excited about that. It's going to be a silent auction and a fantastic dinner, good company, kind of kick off the holidays. And then, of course, um, earlier than that, coming up this week is November 28th, a uh, big day for Downtown Mystic. Not only are we encouraging you to shop local, shop small. So on Friday, just keep your car in the driveway. And on Saturday, go visit all the small shops in Downtown Mystic, Old Mystic Village, Stonington Borough, etc. cetera. Um, all these places that have really unique items uh, and shop local and support your local community. As well, you know Santa's coming by tugboat. That's how we do it here in Mystic. And he's arriving at Cottrell Park in Mystic at 2 o'clock. And then we'll have the lighted boat parade at uh, 6 o'clock that night on November 28th. For more information, you can call the Mystic Chamber. Uh, we have people standing by right now on the hotline. Not really, but it has been quite busy with calls. Um, speaking of shopping small, one of my favorite places to do Christmas shopping happens to be um, the folks that are going to be our guests this evening. Now, uh, you may think, well, Kristen, Florence Griswold Museum is a museum. What do you mean shop small at Florence Griswold? I can tell you they have one of the best gift shops around. So, um, I would love to introduce you to the folks that are here to join me this evening, Tammy Flynn. Hi. Hi, hello there. <laughs> and Matthew Green. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Thrilled to be here. Now, um, I live in East Lyme, and I used to live in Old Lyme. We lived right around the corner from, uh, we call it Flogris. What do you guys call it? We call it Flogris. Affectionately, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> And uh, just learning about the museum and um, the ebb and flow of how you guys work with the community, it's always very inspiring. And um, why don't you tell me a little bit about, about that? Certainly. Well, we um, have four big events a year, um, with, and then interspersed in that we have fantastic exhibitions and lots of other um, activities, but our, our main event for this time of year, we just finished We Fairy Village, if you have been to that. Um, but in, in December, we are um, thrilled because it's Miss Florence's birthday. Was, she was born on Christmas Day. So we really think we need to do Christmas upright. So we have um, the magic of Christmas. Um, it begins December 3rd, goes through um, January 3rd. And there are three special things that happen during that time. We have a palette tree. And an artists, artists use palettes to mix their paint in. Well, we have given um, almost now almost 200 palettes um, to artists all over the country. And they have, in turn, given us these beautiful um, pieces of artwork. Now, we have some of those here. Um, I'll right. point to them. Like Vanna, right? <laughs> Here they are. Here's one. So this is a, a, you know, not all artists work in paint. This uh, is a Ingrid Lavoie, and she is a Schneerenschnitten artist. She works in paper. Bless you. I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know? The art of cut paper. <laughs> Can you say that again? Probably not. But um, <laughs> Schneerenschnitten. Schneerenschnitten. Yes. And so instead of little uh, scissors, she uses exacto blades, which really scares me mm -hmm. to think of that. But um, so she has de very delicately cut out her ode to Miss Florence. And there's Miss Florence's picture. Um, down below. So she's incorporated the Miss, Miss Florence's story within the palette. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Florence's father was a sea captain. She's got his, uh, you know, the, the ships in there. Miss Florence loved cats, so she's got her cats in there. 
and um, our beloved um, historic house as well. Um, so that's Ingrid's. We also have an artist that um, is from Mystic, Russ Kramer, and he usually does these gorgeous marine um, scapes, but um, for us he did Miss Florence's house. That's Russ Kramer. Yeah. That's really isn't impressive. That, yeah. Isn't that, yeah. Because usually his stuff is, like you said, it's very big and uh, very studied oh, yeah. and uh, very full of motion, but this is like one beautiful moment. Isn't it just, yeah, I was, I was so thrilled when we received this because I thought, oh, that's so cool. We're going to get <laughs> a boat, you know, one of his beautiful um, boats or something. And then instead we got this beautiful Miss Florence's house. It's called The Winter Visit. And so here is an artist coming um, out of the cold and into Miss Florence's glowing home. Another artist bum taken yes. in by yes. Florence. <laughs> no, she did that a lot. <laughs> um, and then this artist is um, a native of Georgia, but she um, in, is stationed here with her husband in Groton. And this is called a winter fairyland. And uh, she was thinking a lot when she did this about our wee fairy village and wanted to kind of continue that that mood. Um, with her palette. So you've got these wonderful, fant fantastical reindeer and um, the trees, oh, oops, I'm pointing the wrong way, the trees with the faces in it. That's adorable. It's really pretty. Oh, there we go. So we have, like I said, nearly 200 of these artist trees. There are now uh, three trees, separated over three trees, and uh, they're in the gallery, so you can come see the re uh, current exhibition and then see these wonderful um, pet paintings as well. Uh, also, I noticed that it is in the uh, special holiday issue of Victoria Magazine. You yes. guys got a nice spread, and yes. there's a picture of one of the trees in here. I um, think that should bring some people. Yeah, we were um, really thrilled with that. It's um, They came to take pictures during our Christmas time teas, which is another highlight um, of, the, of the season. Um, you can come and bring your friends and have a lovely tea um, during the month of December. So. Well, fun. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, magic of Christmas. Is there a song that goes along with that? Or you guys go, the magic of Christmas. <laughs> when people walk in, do you say that, Matt? I wish. If I did, they'd probably be running in the opposite direction. <laughs> I don't think that they'd be coming in in hordes. <laughs> now, uh, Matt is visitor relations, uh, director, am. manager, coordinator, etc. Yes. So is this a special time of year for you? It's a wonderful time of the year for us. Um, all, all times of the year are great, um, but this is one of my favorites because families really come together and it's become a tradition to have the different generations come in, see the trees, um, maybe buy an ornament in the gift shop to carry on a tradition of decorating their own tree at home. They go up to our education center and create a craft on Sundays with our education department and um, can give that as a gift. And it really just embodies what the holidays should be. And that's, you know, family and friends and the idea of coming together. So uh, speaking of friends, who's your friend here? <laughs> this is my new best friend. Um, he is in the gift shop, mm -hmm. made in Canada out of recycled sweaters, which I think is a neat idea. That is adorable. And he brought his friend with him, which is that nice little beaver hand puppet. Hello, Matt. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here on the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm going to be having my own show soon, so please tune in. I will. Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is adorable. This is a sock puppet, and I'm assuming that this is also handmade. Yes. In Canada, it says. So, um, gosh, it's comfortable, too. Is it also made out of recycled sweaters? It is. Uh -huh. Great patterns. That's, I really love the detail in the mm -hmm. stitching. Um, I have to say, one of the fun things about buying for the shop this year in particular was I tried to focus on handmade for the holidays. Mm -hmm. So everything that is featured um, on the table is handmade. Mm -hmm. Most of it local, some of it um, fair trade, some of it um, in Canada, 
Uh, we have Georgia represented on the table again. These are wonderful. This is what it's for, right? Very not well, just, yes. Okay. It's not like no, that was a, a belt. A belt. <laughs> oh, you know, multi-purpose. Those are made by Donna Carlson of Chester, Connecticut, and she uses an alpaca wool um, so that it really holds its shape and is, you know, very good for all different types of skin. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more uh, about some of these gifts. Like, is this this box here? Is that the box? Beautiful. Uh, that's actually that? a joint effort um, by a husband and wife duo, um, Pat and Paul Kelbaum of Niantic. Mm -hmm. um, Paul makes these wonderful, luxurious, handmade wooden boxes using all different types of wood from around the world, and then um, Pat hand paints them and. Um, as with the palette that Tammy showed earlier, um, this particular scene was inspired by our Wee Fairy Village as well. And um, she painted that on the top of the box, which is really lovely. This is another one of um, their boxes. This is uh, Paul's, and he makes this out of this. He always uses this wonderful wood, and this one is um, figured maple. And it's just got this wonderful texture in it, or a pattern in it. It's almost shiny. Is the wood so, naturally like that? Yeah, Do you think I, it's I, like I, a... I believe so. There's no... And the graining, isn't that wonderful? The stripes mm -hmm, on it? Mm -hmm. Wow. And they're going to be... Um, there. You can actually come by and speak to these artists because Matt has this really fun program I'm so um, excited about called Elf in Residence this year. And so Pat and Paul are going to be there on December 12th, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, th you'll see, uh, you'll get to meet the artist and, you know, they have different size of things and, and um, there's jewelry artists and he's just got a great, um, a great calendar. Thank so you. Elf in Residence? Elf in Residence. We are trying to help you. The little elves are coming into the museum to help you as much as possible with your holiday shopping. <laughs> So every day um, that we have the teas going on, so Tuesday through Saturday, December 4th through the 23rd, we're going to have a different artisan set up every day. Um, and as Tammy mentioned, it really runs the gamut from jewelry to the wooden boxes. We have on the 23rd um, a baker that does historic baking. Um, using recipes from the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Wow. And she's going to be there on the 23rd, so the She doesn't thought use process. ingredients from the 17th century, right? I hope not, because <laughs> okay. they're really yummy, and if she did, that's re <laughs> that'd really turn my stomach. You're eating history, <laughs> I tell you. I know. So she's coming on the 23rd. She's coming on the 23rd. Um, we thought timing-wise is perfect, because you can buy, if you're like me, I try my best to make something right, homemade right. For, to bring with me on Christmas Eve to my family's house, and it never turns out quite the right way. So I thought, as a backup, I can buy something from Leslie and <laughs> bring it in and pr pass it off as an educational element to oh, our holiday. Oh, yes, you're always <laughs> thinking. Always the, the pit of parties, I see. Yes. <laughs> you wouldn't bring just like a... Um, You'd say, look, I whipped this up. This yeah. uh, sweater out of... Made it out of my old sweaters. Yep. <laughs> I, just, I could not think of a thing, so I just whipped this up. Why not? Why, Why not? not? So, yeah, I'm very impressed. Um, always have been impressed with the merchandising of the um, Florence Griswold shop. And this, so every day, that sounds... Um, it's Tuesday through Thursday, you said. So Tuesday... Tuesday through Saturday. To Saturday. Yeah. Up until from the 4th through the 23rd. You'll Correct. have artists there, mm -hmm. featured artists. And so if you just happen to be shopping. Yes, can... just stumble upon them. That is wonderful. That is some um, intense programming. It is, but we have such a great um, creative group in this region that it was actually kind of easy to fill those spaces. <laughs> right. Now, you guys are open year round, yes? We are. And um, do you, what else do you have coming up? I mean, this is the magic of Christmas. I feel like you've given me already, my calendar's full. Well, and it's going to be really full next year because we've got, um, so uh, the exhibition that you'll see when you come for Magic of Christmas is called The, the Artist in the Connecticut Landscape. And it's 10 museums got together and, and we're showing um, these incredible collections of um, everything from 
the factories of Waterbury to street scenes of New London um, during uh, the 1950s, and um, then your traditional, very lovely pastoral landscapes. Um, and so I bet any town that you're from is, is uh, featured in that exhibition. And it's just going to be a beautiful uh, complement to, or the, the tr uh, palette trees are going to be a beautiful complement to that exhibition. Um, so you'll see that, and then um, that goes until the end of January, and then we have a, a winter show that's called 1040, and our curator is celebrating her 10th anniversary at the museum, and our director is celebrating his 40th. Wow. And so it's going to be really a, a, a compilation of what we've been collecting during that time, and kind of like a look forward to what the museum has to offer in, you know, a little teaser for the future. And then I'm really excited about next summer show um, is the Artist's Garden. And it's a, an exhibition coming from the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And I can't wait for everybody to see these luscious, um, there's a printer gas, there's this beautiful um, hail paint painting of a woman. Oh, it's just gorgeous on a, on a, with a big puffy dress and a red bow. And it's called the Crimson Rambler. And they're just these incredible um, luscious incredibly luscious images and so that's going to be fun for the summer and then there's much other things after that but so uh, not only can you see art at the Florence Griswold Museum but of course uh, you can see Florence Griswold's house and you all have uh, maintained some of the atmosphere yes absolutely and yes it would we have restored it to the, its 1910 era because that's when the um the height of the the lime art colony so this christmas for magic of christmas you can see um, all the decorations that would have been in, in her house in 1910 and some of them's really in that you wouldn't think that they would use those things at that time period. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun to see people go in and really discover what's, you know, what was used at that point. Um, and it was, as we said, it was Miss Florence's birthday. She would have been 165 this year. Wow. Um, and we always have a big celebration for her. Um, I believe it's the Saturday after Christmas this year. You can check the website. Um, and we do hands-on crafts and have a big cake and party down for Florence. So. Party down for Florence. Now, that's always what I think of when I think of the Florence Griswold, that house. I think of um, her yeah. partying down with the artists. And, of course, there's that famous painting of them on the porch. And it just reminds me of that whole uh, era, you know, and the whole uh, bohemian kind of uh, movement when it was uh, romantic to not have money and have talent instead, you know, instead of... Desolate. And to have that in Connecticut, I think, um, is so different because you really, I can't think of any places that could say that they are an artist colony now in Connecticut. Maybe Provincetown on the Cape, you know. Right, right. I, do you have any, can you think of any? Is there any Actors. Florence Griswold happening right now? Well, I, um, I probably, like you said, Provincetown. Um, I mean, I think there's probably smaller pockets going on, and certainly we have some wonderful art associations um, that are trying to do that as well. But I don't think there's a Miss Florence opening her arms to artist borders and um, and them having such a rocking good time there. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but yes, it's it. And then what people love when they go into the house is to see these paintings that have been there a hundred years on the walls and door panels they actually painted there and so it's it's really cool that you will not see anywhere in America because that's a, a tradition that the artist had when they went to Giverny or some of the places in Holland and England where they would set up camp for a while um, and then when they came here they sort of said oh let's do this we'll paint on the the walls and uh, the wooden panels on the walls and they left behind these incredible artwork. So we're so fortunate that through, you know, the time period they've been kept and cleaned and taken care of for our visitors to see and generations of visitors to see. It does really give you the sense of, of going back in time when you get into the mansion. Um, do you, I'm sure everybody out there is wondering, are there any ever, an, uh, anybody who says they see spirit? In the Florence Griswold house? Well, 
Have you had, had that? You know, we've been featured in a couple books, um, local lore, and we do have some visitors that I think feel a presence. I, I personally have never felt anything yet. <laughs> and you've been there for? I've been there going on 12 years, yes, but, 12 but years. haven't been there yet to feel anything. But I'm not saying that there's nothing, but I can't confirm it. Well, my first year there, I had had a previous experience at another place. And so um, my first year there, the lady that worked in the gift shop, it was just the historic house at the time. And I said, now really, have you, you know, is there any, are there any ghosts here? Are you? And she was so sweet and calm and she, she's been locking up the house for, you know, 20 years or whatever. And so she, I knew she would know of anybody. And she said, you know, I just feel this wonderful presence. Like, I just feel like it's a good, good place. You know, that it, there's there's nothing, you know, there, it's happiness and calmness. And I thought, I can deal with that. <laughs> I can deal with that. <laughs> I take that. I, I feel, uh, I understand uh, what you mean by that. It seems like if there's ever been an experience in your life where you had, I, I remember uh, a couple of plays that I was in or, you know, a group of people working together towards one particular goal or maybe that one magical Christmas. Um, it's something that stays in your memory. And um, I think it's Maya Angelou who said that the words uh, have, or the walls hear everything and that, that the words stick. So I would say the same thing about feelings and experiences, that they would stick in the walls. So you can kind of get that sense that, these things happened here for sure, and you could probably carry some of that away with you. It's a nice no, way of looking at it, absolutely. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit more about a few of these things. So are these handmade as well, these ornaments? Because this is they are quite something. Rob Wallace of Please Art zoom in on that. One Studio mm -hmm. in Old Saybrook. He makes those all by hand. Um, they're really beautiful, hand-blown, right in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. He's another featured artisan that will be there um, the first Saturday of December. And he'll have his ornaments as well as a few of his other pieces. This is his too? That's his mm -hmm. as well. Little Santa, it's a baby rattle. No. <gasps> yes. It is a baby rattle. That is so cute. They are hand crocheted. Um, those are done <laughs> in Bangladesh. It's a fair trade. Mm -hmm. And right. I keep going like Vanna White yeah. here. And then right here. Go ahead. Um, Let me carry a hold of your, uh, your friend. This is a really heavy, it's very substantial, wall hanging. Um, Houston Lou oh, is um, his name. It's a copper piece that has glass enameling over top of it. And each one features a quote. So this one is one of my favorite quotes, which is why it made it on the table today. Um, to our children, we give two lasting things. One is roots, the other wings. Aww. And then it says the speaker mm -hmm. on the top. Mm -hmm. um, so it's glass enamel over copper. That is gorgeous. And they have a hole on the back so they can go right up on the wall. So it's a nice instant gift. And it comes in this really beautiful um, teal gift box. So it's an instant gift right there. Forget it. It's, uh, so call 1 800 uh, <laughs> <laughs> Flogers right now. And <laughs> that is amazing. Well, this is a beautiful spread of. Uh, oh, and we you. have some little cards here as well. We do all kinds of wonderful little cards. Monica DeHaan, um, she does Dutch Iris paper folding. Um, all of those are hand cut little scraps of paper. It's actually um, a Victorian tradition from Holland where they would take the inside of elaborate envelopes and um, different scraps of paper, whether it be from, you know, candy boxes or stationery, and they would cut them into little strips to save the rich patterns and then they would fold them together and make these wonderful cards out of them. So she's carrying on a wonderful old tradition. Now I think she gives part of the proceeds uh, to a charity as well. And um, I know 
that when I talked to her, she had said like once she had the inside of a pay stub, like the inside of a pay envelope. Oh, wow. And uh, her husband just had to throw it away. And you know how it's like a blue and white um, pattern, if you think about it? When, you, when she put it on the card, it ended up looking like the porcelain from, um, you know, yeah, from Delft. It, was, it ended up looking like that when she wow. ended up putting it on a card. So, yeah, she says she's obsessed, which <laughs> I think um, a lot of artists are, and I think that it's important to, to be that, to, to do something that's so um, artistic. You have to keep going until it's finished. Would you agree? Yes. What's the pig? Who's the pig? The pig, he is a chinchito made in Chile, and he is a three-legged pig because they bring good luck and fortune to family and friends. So for the holiday season, what better than to give someone you care about good luck and good fortune for the new year? Well, I'm just going to take all of these right now. And um, so I didn't have to go anywhere, right, to do shopping. You guys brought it all to me. And I'll probably take this guy home. Aww. And he'll probably end up um, in pieces because I have a dog that looks just like it. So maybe I'll give it away. <laughs> Um, but I do want to say thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having thank us. You. And it's yeah, so much fun. It's yeah, it's been great. And uh, these are really impressive gifts. And Florence Griswold, of course, is an impressive uh, museum in our community. So, did you guys have anything uh, last bits that you wanted to let everybody know about? No, nope. just please come and yeah, come for come a visit. On down. <laughs> come to the Florence Griswold Museum to experience the magic of Christmas, and it begins December now. 3rd. Yes. <laughs> December 3rd. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good night, and we will see you next time. I'm the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce, Kristen Hartnett. Thank you. <laughs>